All right, so I had this um, NBA Jam board that was having some issues. I wanted to show you kind of the symptoms, what was going wrong with it, um, how I diagnosed it and uh, fixed it, and um, it's all it's all good to go now. All right, so to get started, if we look and see what was wrong with this board, I'll show you kind of um, some video here of what happened when I powered it up. It would boot up, it would do the ROM check, and four uh, ROMs in a row would show up bad and two other ones. So six total of the EEPROMs were showing up bad on the test screen uh, when the board boots up. So not good. Um, once the, the game did though uh, start, it would boot and um, you could actually play it. <laughs> the sound worked fine, uh, but all the graphics were super garbled, um, tons of stuff missing, tons of stuff scrambled. You, can kinda, you could kind of make out what was going on in the game there, but not good shape. So uh, the first thing I did was um, just check all the simple stuff. I made sure that the board was getting proper voltage. I made sure that there was uh, proper voltage getting to the EEPROMs. You can measure kind of the diagonal pins. You should get 5 volts on those. So I tried a bunch of different things. Just make sure the basic stuff was good. The battery was dead on the board. The um, CMOS uh, battery, I replaced that. Uh, none of that changed anything, but I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Uh, make sure it wasn't anything silly. Um, so I had these four bad EEPROMs and two on the other side, so six bad EEPROMs. Um, it seems weird that six ROMs would go bad, particularly four in a row like that, like the actual data was corrupted on those ROMs. That seems kind of unlikely. Um, anyways, what I did first tried was just popping those EEPROMs up real carefully, prying them up, um, trying not to uh, bend any pins, and reseeding those bad ones. Uh, two of the ones that I ended up reseeding which were UJ18 and UJ19. When I popped those out, there was corroded pins on some of those EEPROMs, and some of the pins, the legs actually popped off, actually broke, uh, which was bad for two reasons. One, because now I couldn't use that EEPROM anymore, um, assuming it was still good, um, because the legs wouldn't go into the socket because it was missing legs. But what was even worse is the little legs that popped off were now stuck in the socket. <laughs> so I couldn't just put a fresh new uh, chip in there because there was little pins stuck where the new pins have to go in. So I might have been able to get some real tiny tweezers and go to work on that. But um, but I, what I decided to do instead was just to replace the that socket for one of them for um, UJ19, uh, I believe. So now I have two problems. <laughs> now I got uh, ROM showing up bad, and I have a socket that I know won't work, and I have two of those EEPROMs that I know the chips are no good anymore because my pins broke off. So the first thing I had to do then was to, um, that I know I had to do, was replace that socket because it was all messed up. So even if I got a good new EEPROM back in it, uh, I got a bad socket. So I knew I had to at least do that. So um, went ahead and desoldered that socket on the back side of the board, uh, managed to finally get it out, um, popped it in with a brand new one. You can see it's a little bit of a different design, doesn't matter, it has one bar across there instead of two supporting bars, but same thing. Pop that new one in there, uh, now I was okay there. And then the next thing I tried doing was replacing those two EEPROMs with uh, newly burnt ones. So um, I did that and I actually didn't get anything to work. It still didn't work. Um, so replacing any of those bad ROMs with newly burnt ones um, didn't work. And I'll get a little bit more to that in a bit because I come back to that because two of those are different. So I still have these six bad ROMs. Uh, what am I going to do? Okay, so the thing that seemed real suspicious to me was that four of them in a row were uh, bad. So what I did was I went over to the schematics for uh, this board, which you can find most of these online. Um, you know, just Google for them. You can usually find them. So this one had uh, pretty detailed stuff in here, um, schematics for, for all the different boards. But in particularly what I was interested in was um, the CPU board here. And the bad ROMs, this lays out all the ROMs here and kind of the connections between them. Uh, and if you can see the ones that are highlighted in red here, these are the ones that were showing up bad on my EEPROM test. There's two other ones that were showing up bad. These are these blue ones, and we'll get to those in just a little bit. But the four in a row that were bad are these four that are highlighted in red. And so if we zoom in on these, 
you'll see, uh, for example, here's UG14. That's one of those uh, one of the ROMs that was bad, and you'll see that the data connections for this EEPROM over here, and they're labeled 0 through 7, IDAT 0 through 7 over here. And if we look at all of the red ones that are bad, it has those same, uh, those same bus channels, 0 through 7. You see if you have a green one over here, those are different, 8 through 15. So if we look at all four of those ones that are in a row, 0 through 7, 0 through 7. All right, that's big news. That's, that's something to work with. So if we look um, in some of these other data sheets, you keep going through the schematic, you'll see that there are two ICs, UJ13 and UH13, and you'll see that both of those are identified with um, two different um, sets of addresses. You got 0 through 7 on UH13 and 9 through 15 on UJ13. So UH13 has the same is responsible for um, this is uh, let's see what the actual data sheet calls this this is um, an octal bus transceiver UH13 and UJ13 and these are two ICs and both of those ICs are SN uh, where is it uh, SN74 ALS245 um, is what these are labeled and like I said those are called octal bus transceivers with three state outputs I don't know what all that means, but I do know that that's some sort of bus uh, transceiver that goes between um, the rest of the board and those ROM chips. And those ROM chips are using those same channels, 0 through 7 over here, uh, and not 18 through 15. So this, this, was my, um, this is my, my target here, is UH13. I suspect that that is bad. So that's what I did. I uh, bought some uh, new ICs to replace UH13, uh, and I replaced UJ13 at the same time while I was at it. They're both right next to each other. Um, I need. I was going to do a bunch of soldering anyways, and um, who knows if the one the one went bad, maybe the other one was going to go bad too. So, and I bought like ten of them. So. I uh, just replaced both of those. So that was the the big step in this repair was replacing both of those ICs. And once I did that, I powered everything back on, and I had uh, lots of success. The the first UG14, 16, 17, and 18 all came up green. Uh, however, UJ18 and 19 still came up red, so I'm going to get to those in a second. Kept all the ROMs the original except for UJ18 and 19 were the ones that I had made new copies of because I had broken the pins on the old ones. And so we'll get to that in a second. But UG14, 16, 17, 18 all came up green. That's great. UJ18 and 19 still came up red. But the game still started and still worked perfectly. So that was pretty interesting. I didn't notice any problems uh, playing the game um, with anything. But um, on the ROM test with the uh, boot up test, I was still getting reds on those two. Now what was interesting here is the chips that I had used to burn those new EEPROMs, uh, by the way, those chips are M27C4001s. Uh, the chips that I had in there were negative 15 timing, and there's different timings on these chips, and honestly, I was not quite sure how important those timings were. Uh, the original chips that are in there are labeled negative 10, and the negative 15s that I had in there uh, were working. The game seemed to be working fine, but I was getting errors on the test screen. And so what I did was I had um, negative 10 timing chips that were on their way that were being shipped. And once I got those, I reburned them uh, with UJ18 and UJ19. I reburned them, popped them in, and then I was getting all greens all across the board. Everything was working. So apparently those timings do matter, um, at least in the sense of the self test that goes on there, uh, which is interesting. But the game appeared to work with the other ones. But anyways, I replaced those, um, buttoned everything else up. I printed new labels for those new ROMs that um, I had burned. Uh, but those both went in fine. Went ahead and reattached the soundboard, uh, got it all good, and booted it up. Everything's great. It works fine. And uh, then I was able to play it a little bit. And I'm uh, looking forward to building this one into a full cabinet. So... Um, that's to come. Stay tuned. And I uh, hope you learned something from this. I did. And uh, that's it. Later.